In this video, I want to talk about an incorrect waiting position while waiting at an intersection to turn left. And this is really important because if you do this on a road test, you can fail for it. It's also very dangerous and I can, we'll be talking about how to avoid getting stuck in this type of situation. So we're stopped behind a box truck here and you can see this truck presents definitely uh, an obstruction that doesn't allow us to see what's happening up ahead. We can't really see the traffic lights directly in front of us. And this is why I, students will ask me from time to time, why do we have multiple lights at an intersection? And it's because sometimes the sun glare doesn't help you see uh, the light in front of you. Sometimes you've got an obstruction like this. So they will have redundant lights on the side telling you uh, the same thing. And in addition, sometimes the light burns out, so they'll have another one that uh, acts as a redundancy. Now, this doesn't always mean that the light that's over here is the exact same one that's in front of you. Sometimes this one will say left turn signal beside it. So it's not the same as a through a light. So in this case, uh, it doesn't say anything besides, so we can see the light has just turned green. I also wanna turn your attention to this pedestrian here waiting uh, at the crosswalk. And you can see from the way they're positioned that they're intending on getting through across to the other side. So as we get the video rolling here, you can see they're starting to step out. And I wanna turn your attention to this vehicle here. We see that initially their vehicle is pointed straight, but as we come to a possible halt here, and the reason, and this is actually, I wanna go back one more step. This is how some rear-enders happen uh, on the road is, Let's just go right back to the beginning. You see the light's green and the vehicle in front of me starts moving. Now I can't see what's happening in front of this vehicle. So it's not very wise for me to assume that we're all just gonna keep going, right? Especially when the light has just turned green. This even holds true when there's just a slightly bigger vehicle than your vehicle that's obstructing your view. In this particular case, there's a vehicle in front of this truck that's waiting to turn right. And they're going to have to yield to the pedestrian that's about to step out into the crosswalk. And so the traffic, even though it starts picking up, stops back down again. So this ties back into uh, what I've been saying in my other videos is leave space cushion in front of you. You just never know when you're going to need it. So in this case, we stop for the traffic in front. And this is some of the scenarios where you might get rear-ended where the vehicle behind you also thinks, hey, the traffic is picking up, so maybe we're all just gonna go. So by leaving yourself more room, if this vehicle in front of you stops for an obstruction, you can kind of coast up a bit slower so the vehicle behind you has time to clue in that the traffic is also stopping as well. So. The traffic gets going. You see this vehicle was the one that was in front of this one. They made the turn now that that pedestrian is crossed. Now, you'll see this is the whole point of this video right now is this vehicle, or the driver rather, didn't analyze the situation, right? While we were sitting at that red light, they should have glanced over at the crosswalk area or the sidewalk closest to the crosswalk area and realized, hey, this pedestrian has their feet pointed into this crosswalk chances are when we get the green light, they'll want to go through on their walk signal. And so if they had read that situation, they would have kept their vehicle straight and not block the intersection as they have here. Now, again, this is something that I see a lot on the road, unfortunately. And the reason this is not only dangerous is because, you know, you are blocking through traffic, right? So if there is a vehicle in this lane approaching to cross, now they are blocking their path. And along the same lines is what I will see sometimes is there'll be a person waiting here to turn left. And because they're turning left, well, this is a, a T intersection, so there won't be someone turning left here. But if it was just like a um, four-way intersection, if there's a vehicle here waiting to turn left, it would make it hard for this vehicle to see who's coming through in this lane 
And so what I see on the road from time to time is this person will try to creep forward, angling their car to the left so they can see a bit better past this vehicle here. And then the risk that they're running here is that if now there's traffic coming through like we are right now, and this person has a clear gap to make the turn, they will now be impeding the movement of the vehicles behind the vehicle that was waiting to turn left. So this is never a good idea, regardless of whether you can't see or whether you're waiting for pedestrians. Now, this ties <laughs> into another thing that I ask very often from students is, do I have to do a left shoulder check when I'm making a left turn? And the answer is, the examiner is not marking you for a left turn shoulder check. However, if you come into this intersection and then you miss the pedestrian that is, let's say over here, stepping out to use the crosswalk and you end up having to wait for them, then it's on you. So I just tell students, be a robot, do that shoulder check regardless of the direction you're planning on turning to so that you know, you're not missing something. So that your responsibility as a driver when you're coming up to make this kind of left turn are three things. You need to be thinking about what color is the light? Is it still green? What are the oncoming traffic doing? In our case, how far are we from the intersection? How fast are we approaching the intersection? If you were this car, you'd be thinking about us. And you wanna make sure that there are no pedestrians coming out to use this crosswalk here or this way. So what I tell students is when you're waiting in that waiting position with your rear wheels in the crosswalk area, just before you think that it's clear from oncoming traffic, glance over to the left and make sure there's no new pedestrian walking up to use the crosswalk. You know, it's a pretty clear scenario right now. For the most part, there's just one pedestrian crossing the crosswalk. But on a busy road, let's say Robson Street in Vancouver, you'll have like 50 people walking this way and 50 people walking this way, right? And all it takes is for you to, you know, misjudge one of the people or miscalculate or miss seeing one of the people that's coming up to use the crosswalk. And you might find yourself in a situation like this. This causes congestion on the road, it's unsafe. You can fail the road test for it. So this shouldn't be happening. The only time you're, you would be in this situation here is if you're actually planning on completing the turn. If you're getting stuck in a position like this, that means you weren't planning in advance. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video. And just before we wrap up here, I wanna talk about a couple of signs, might as well throw those in there. And the first one is this obstruction, keep left or keep right sign. So these signs are really handy, especially when it's dark out and it's raining and you can't quite see as clearly from three blocks away. These signs are nice and reflective. They can kind of tell you where the, the road is splitting or what your options are on this road. So you can think of this sign as some a flag person standing here pointing to the ground like, hey, keep to the left or keep to the right. And those signs, sometimes we're coming up and I'll say, next intersection, turn right. And the student's like, where's the intersection? Or where should I be going into here or into this slip lane? And if they had identified this sign, they would have realized, hey, yeah, this sign is telling me there's something on the right that, I, that might be of interest to me. The other reason we've got these signs, you know, sometimes people might be wondering, why do we have this sign? It's obvious there's two lanes here, right? And it's because if it snows, right, and you've got like banks of snow here, it's hard to see through all that uh, white powder where is the two possible paths. So if the snow builds up and builds up and builds up, you know, this gives you a bit more of an indication of uh, where that path might be. The other sign here is, and I've referred to this in other videos, is this, you know, lane is ending sign, right? And so here we're coming up to merge onto the highway and they've not only posted it once, they've posted it twice. They're really trying to tell you to, hey, clue in, and you need to merge with the traffic that's in this lane, right? So very often we'll come into a merge lane like this and the students will just be like, oh, my, my lane continues, I'll just keep going. And it's like, no, because think of it this way. Let's back up here. I've got a green light and you can see there's a turn lane here. So if there's someone 
in this turn lane, as I'm coming up to get into this slip lane, it can be that I'm up to this point now, and the person that was waiting in that turn lane now gets a clearer gap from traffic, so they start making it onto this road. So I can't just assume that because I'm here, I can just continue and carry on. So these signs should be your clue that, hey, I need to signal, mirror, mirror, shoulder check before I start making my way into this lane. And so if we continue ahead, we're picking up our speed to match the speed of the traffic on the highway up to the speed limit here. And we'll see another sign here that says merge, right? It's telling you, hey, this lane's gonna end and you need to come into the highway at the appropriate speed. Notice it's not a yield sign, right? A lot of students mix up a merge sign with a yield sign. Yield sign is telling you, be prepared to stop if it becomes necessary. This sign is telling you, match the speed of the highway up to the speed limit so you can get on appropriately, right? So now sometimes students are like, well, what's the speed that I should come into the highway? You don't have to leave these things to guess. And you see right now they've posted a sign telling you the speed at this particular stretch of the highway is 80. So you shouldn't be coming in at 90 and you shouldn't be coming in at 50 when conditions allow, right? So what happens sometimes is students want to drive 55 or 65 thinking, well, if I go slow, chances are nothing bad is going to happen. But if this person on the highway is going 80 or worse, they're going faster than the speed limit, they're coming in at 90 and you're coming in at 60, then it's, not, it's going to be a mismatch of speed. So it's counterintuitive, but you should match the speed of the highway. So get your speed up on this merge lane. And you know what? As you're approaching the highway, if you notice, hey, traffic is all backed up, well, it's a lot easier to go from 80 down to 40 than it is to go from 40 to 80 in the last second, especially in your typical vehicle here. So a couple of takeaways from that video. Don't enter the intersection if you don't have a clear path to clear the intersection and watch for signs, right? The signs are there they've spent a lot of money putting these signs in so as long as you look ahead and plan ahead driving will be a lot easier for you so i hope this video taught you something and i'll see you in the next one